Hey, what's going on YouTube? Uh, I've been meaning to make this video for quite some time because I've watched videos of people trying to explain it. I've read forums and everyone seems to be misinformed and misled and just getting it straight wrong. So I wanted to set it straight. Now to get it you know, straight off to let you know, I got my facts from uh, the official Sony PlayStation website, uh, the Sony headquarters website, uh, NVIDIA.com and Wikipedia.com on the PS3, which... Uh, on Wikipedia, a lot of the information is put on directly from Sony that let you know who put a post in. It's directly from Sony and Nvidia uh, from the E3 show when they post it. But uh, basically, here it is. I just want to explain it and let everyone set it straight. Now, if I don't answer anything you guys want to know, or if I don't cover anything, or there's something you might think needs correcting, message me or comment on my video. Let me know, and I'll either answer yours or set it straight. Whatever. So to get started, the the brains behind the PS3 is the cell broadband engine it's uh... it's a custom made processor from ibm partnered with toshiba and sony and it's not to let you know straight off it's not a pc based processor it's a whole new art technology whole new architecture which is why it's a lot harder for developers to develop for it and uh... program for it because it's brand new technology now the 360 processor yeah that's pc based only three cores on the 360 and that's pc based which is why you see a lot of PC games going to 360, vice versa, and why it's so much easier to program for it because it's it's some it's technology they've been working with for years. It's current technology. Now, uh, it has a lot of people. I see like the main one of the main things a lot of people get wrong is the the cores on the cell broadband engine. It has some people say it has six cores, some people say it has seven, some people say it has nine. The correct number is eight. All right, the cell broadband engine or the cell it has eight cores on it. Now, each one of those cores runs at 3.2 gigahertz. Now, one thing Sony did was they actually uh, dedicated, they locked up one of those cores dedicated to the operating system, or as you and me know it, the cross-media bar. And so developers only can use seven cores, which is still plenty. Now, uh, it's partnered, and by partnered, I mean it is connected. It's directly connected, working in parallel with a custom graphics chip made by NVIDIA called the RSX. Now that graphics chip runs at 550 megahertz. It's uh, I don't know the shade of clock or off the top of my head and all the other specs on it right now. If you want to know, like I said, message me or comment. And uh, now they work together. And one thing I really want to quickly explain this is uh, they actually because the the cell broadband engine is so powerful. The Sony stated that it can actually do graphical calculations like today's PC stuff, like the 360s PC processor can only do physics and AI at the most. And this one can actually do graphical calculations, like it can actually render graphics. And uh, like they 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 were saying, like you can actually program one core doing the AI, another core for physics, another core for lighting, another core for shading, another core for uh, whatever you know. And and you go you come up to like six cores, you still got that seventh core. And what they could do is they can actually dedicate that seventh core to the graphics chip, so the graphics chip can actually run and render at 3.2 gigahertz. Doesn't need to. So I doubt they ever really would need it that fast, but um, what it can do is actually take off a lot of the load from the graphics chip and do it. So like they can actually have the graphics chip, you know, uh, render certain textures, and then they have the the process that's dedicated to it render the other textures. So it takes off the load and allows everything to run smoother. It allows for a lot more stuff to do because since you got more stuff to do to render, a lot more. You got a lot more processors to render stuff. It means a lot more stuff can be rendered, a lot more realistic, and also more uh, power, uh, better textures, more higher quality textures because of the power. Now, um, the the other main thing you see the difference between 360 and PS3 is the the RAM, which uh, 360 has unified RAM. The PS3 has dedicated RAM. Now they both have 512 megabytes of RAM total. But the 360 is unified, which means all 512 are together. They're always together. Now, you can put it toward the graphics, put it toward the main. I'm sure you can split it up or something. But it, it's unified. It's in 512 is 512. And uh, the PS3 is dedicated, which means the the graphics chip has a dedicated 256 megabytes of RAM. And the, the main system has 256 megabytes of RAM. Now, a lot of one person that really pissed me off was they were just talking out their ass saying, like, oh, 360 can do better graphics because... Uh, more RAM equals better graphics. Wrong. That is so completely wrong. I don't know where they got the information from, but it just made me laugh about how stupid of a saying it was because they've already proved it can do better graphics with Uncharted Metal Gear Solid 4. But um, 
they can actually program even though it's dedicated they can program some of that ram from the main stuff you know to work with the graphics for the graphics chip so it's not like stuck at 256 they can always up it up but the truth behind it is more ram equals higher resolutions that's all more ram is for it's just higher resolutions like on your screen not necessarily for the graphics it's for the screen the more the higher the resolution on your screen the more ram is needed <clears throat> that's all that that means and um basically what else i want to get to is uh basically uh the layout of it uh you, you know you know, all know the, the the shell let me turn the light on so you can see here uh the layout of it is you got you got your blu-ray drive on this side you know it's about that big all the way to the back and then you got your power supply over here which which goes you know all the way to the back then on your other models you know i got a 40 gig so it doesn't have it but on the other models you got your memory cards up here uh you got your intake up over here and everything and on the other models you have an intake down here also but mine doesn't have it basically that's how it's laid out you got your power supply your blu-ray drive and then like right in the middle right here kind of along this whole thing behind all that stuff though is the the motherboard it's where all the processors lie and they, they pretty much lie flat down you know face down like upside down basically because the down here in this whole section is your cooling it, it's your cooling unit that's your it's your custom cooling unit that uses uh uses copper piping copper piping for uh custom copper piping if i get that right uh for the cooling and uh the fan is down here which it, which it, it has uh it's like the biggest fan i've ever seen in a console and bigger than most pc fans pretty much any pc fan like blade wise not size wise because it, it's a 15 blade fan which is incredible there's a ps3 video that shows you about it uh called ps3 teardown you just type in a search and you'll see it and um but it's a 15 blade fan it's pretty much like the size of half of the ps3 and it, and it sucks in the air through here and it blows it out through here it sucks in through the front too if it needs it but this is the main intake right here because the shorter you see the shorter it is to get to the chips right across there you know just get to it quicker and get rid of the air quicker and uh your vents over here you see them right down there those are for your hard drive you know a lot of people say it's for the main system now your hard drive needs to keep cool too and you know when you play stuff that loads on your hard drive you feel it whenever you're playing it your hard drive uh the heat comes out of there but uh a lot of gripe i get if i can get this real quick a lot of gripe i get is people don't know anything about the fans some people say there's a fan over here there's a fan up front there's a fan in the back wrong They're all wrong it's one fan, like I said, one fan, 15 inch, uh, 15 blade fan, that sucks in the air through here, in the front, and blows it out the back. All right, I wanted to get that straight. Now, one thing if I can cover really quick is uh, any of you who have a 60, 80, or 20 gig out there, please message me. Please send a video response or anything to let me know. But I've seen people on YouTube. They said that oh, I got intake on the bottom and out in the outtake on top. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, well, that can't be right. I don't know if it is right or not, because they're all pretty much designed the same. It's only the 40 gig has improved cooling, so I don't know if they changed it for the 40, but let me know. I really want to know. Is, um, you know, because this is all intake for me, right here. All this is intake. And the out, the back is the outtake, which is why that vent is the size of, like, the whole PS3. And some people said it's, like, intake here and outtake here, then also outtake in the back. And uh, I found it a little hard for that to even happen. But, uh, like I said, let me know if you have a 60 or 80 uh how that works all right and i know i sped through this i could talk on it forever but uh you know if you have anything else you want me to cover anything else you want me to talk about or any questions about anything i haven't talked about uh let me know and i'll, I'll get back to you as quick as i can all right so you guys take it easy and see ya